What's up, disc golfers? Joe here with Joe's Disc Golf, and boy, oh boy, I'm talking about worlds again. Not that I'm really upset about that, but some new information has come to light with the whole OB painted line situation. If you're unfamiliar with that situation, OB lines were painted late after the first round, the night of the first round. That really kind of screwed over some athletes, some disc golf participants with how the OB lines were treated and how things were treated prior to the lines being painted. Now, there are a couple of things that could have happened. One, Mulligans could have originally said that, no, you cannot paint anything on our on our grass. This is a golf course. No lines are allowed to be painted. I don't think that happened, but you never know. So what happened then was they just painted slapdash OB lines where things were not always clear as to what was going on. And one thing that had happened was at the Utah Open uh, about a week, week and a half beforehand, this matter was brought to light. Um, Nico had some issues with that, whether things were inbounds or out of bounds and in hazard or not in hazard. And it can be tricky to play. There's a course near me where I play where I could make about a one foot argument either way depending on how I think it might benefit me, uh, whether it is inbounds or not, because it is the gravel path. And the gravel kind of spreads out and just kind of slowly diffuses. So there's no, it's not like a paved path where this is inbounds, this is out of bounds. It's a, uh, this is, could be either way. What was interesting was a tweet by Go Blue All The Way. The worst part, and I'm quoting here, the worst part is I believe most of this was tried was tried in private first. I was there two weeks ago when Ricky was begging for lines to be painted to the people in charge of the event. No, he's talking about the Utah Open. Only so much can be done before it has to be exposed in public criticism. It happened due to the fiasco on hole 16 at Mulligan's, where it took a group three to five minutes to decide if Nico was in hazard or safe. I tried to get a disc signed after the round by Ricky, but declined, but he declined and made a beeline for the TD to complain. Later, he found me and signed it. So, I mean, good guy Ricky there. It's just unfortunate that things like that had to happen. Eagle McMahon also weighed in, thank you to all the staff who worked hard to make World. It takes a lot of work to make an event of this magnitude happen. But I have to say there needs to be standards. Today, dozens of players lost strokes due to bunkers, shorelines, and greens that were painted last night during the event. It is not acceptable. Once the event has started, leave the course alone. In parentheses, unless deemed unsafe. We've all had those issues before. Again, I'm grateful for the people who volunteered their time, but the PDGA should not let this happen at their biggest event. And I totally agree. If something happens where, you know, um, you step on an area and suddenly bees come up from the ground. You have one of those ground nests that happens. And then all of a sudden there's a hazard there. There's a, there's an OB spot, you know, with a little sign that maybe says caution bees that happens. I get that. I understand that. But to change the course, change everything in the middle of a tournament, that's just dumb. I don't know who is responsible for it. I did see a posting saying it was not the TD's fault for the way the lines were painted and what happened there that it was to be blamed on the PDGA. But my question would be, why weren't they painted? If you knew you had these issues and it's the same staff from the Utah Open to Worlds, if you knew this was an issue ahead of time, why was it still an issue at a tournament held a week and a half later? That's my question. I don't know. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. I try to respond to everything. You can also find me on social media at Joe's Disc Golf on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. We also have a website, joesdiscgolf.com. Let's not forget to uh, like, subscribe, rate, review, all that fun stuff, whether you're listening to this on audio or whether you're watching this in video. Thank you all again for watching. Don't forget to thank Treesus if you manage to kick into the fairway after a tree hit. And if you kick deeper into the wood, then guess what? You need to repent and reflect because you have transgressed against Treesus in some form or fashion, and you need to fix what you need to fix. Thank you all for watching. I've been Joe. You've been awesome. And I can't wait to see you all in the next video.